So here, just after the ARM press conference here at Computex 2017, you launched a new GPU. Yes, we did, the Mali G72. It's our latest high performance GPU uh, for you know premium mobile. So uh, this one has more performance and a whole bunch of new features also. And you're talking about machine learning. What are, what are you talking about? So this one's primarily about uh, improving efficiency. So we've got uh, more graphics energy efficiency. Uh, we've got improved execution efficiency uh, for machine learning algorithms. And also uh, it's smaller. So uh, we've improved the area efficiency for our silicon uh, partners who uh, spend a lot of silicon putting down our GPU. So they care very much about the size. So basically, everything's better. <laughs> but with all those newer, smaller nanometers, actually, isn't there lots of space on the silicon that they need to use and they can just use nope. it up for GPU? Nope. Um, so uh, there used to be about 10 cents per square mil was this it was the going rate for silicon and now it's actually increased from that on the newer uh, FinFET processes so they care very much particularly if you're putting down a, a premium mobile GPU you know 15 uh, square mil or something like that that's a lot of silicon and that's a lot of dollars but uh, when you do computer vision, the stuff from Apical and all that stuff, mm -hmm. is it running on the GPU or is it some other parts of the SOC that do that stuff? So different of our ARM partners will do things differently. Uh, one of the things we've seen is that running machine learning is something that people want to do in different places. So the Cortex-A75 uh, that was uh, announced today is also made uh, more efficient at running those algorithms. And the, Cortex the Mali G72, our GPU, uh, has also been improved for executing those algorithms. And the dynamic uh, connection technology, uh, which enables uh, people to connect uh, accelerators uh, coherently, uh, is also something that we're, you know, we're announcing and it, it, people are using uh, because they will want to connect their accelerators, uh, not necessarily ones that we've produced, but their own in that way. So we're just trying to make it easy for the ARM partnership to do uh, these process, this, these type of new algorithms in the way that suits them best for their particular consumer devices. So um, you already did, uh, you started BeatFrost with a G71. So yep. what, what's, what's, what's been the, 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 the potential with that? What, how, what, what are you achieving with this? Uh, so G71 has appeared in a couple of consumer devices, a very high-end Samsung uh, Galaxy S phone and also in the Huawei Mate 9. Um, and we've had great success with that. Uh, Mali G72, we're not announcing licensees for today, uh, but, you know, the usual suspects. And uh, we, we would expect uh, you to see that in consumer devices either later this year or very early next year. And the BitFrost did a whole bunch of uh, re-optimization of how you do a GPU on a, on a mobile SOC? Yeah, so Mali G72, is, as I say, is primarily all about efficiency compared to Mali G71. Uh, we've gone to uh, a great deal of optimization trouble uh, from Mali G71. It's still on the Bifrost architecture, but uh, we've made a, a whole bunch of optimizations. Perhaps 500 little ones and, you know, three, three major ones. Uh, one around the execution of machine learning algorithms where we've reworked the data, data path uh, in the ALU um, and also made some changes around the uh, instruction cache uh, configuration. And that's given us about 17% speed up on machine learning. And also we're, we're, we're getting very healthy improvements in energy efficiency for graphics. Of course, most of these premium mobile devices, uh, the limiting factor is the thermal budget. So it's very much, what performance can you give me within this thermal factor? Uh, different manufacturers will, of course, have a different number for that, uh, including case design and you know chip packaging and things like that. But they will have an absolute number and they will want to uh, maximize the performance they can get out of that thermal budget. So uh, it's possible to crank up the megahertz and stuff like that, that helps? Yeah, so different of, our, different of our partners will do things differently. So some people will uh, put down lots of cores uh, and then crank down the megahertz, run it very slowly and run it at very low voltage. So you get the performance by having lots of cores running slowly. Some of our partners will put fewer cores down but crank up uh, the, the megahertz and crank up the voltage uh, and get the performance that way. And what we actually see is you get a spectrum of these across the ARM partnership, people doing things differently. 
is it uh, true that on the GPU there's more uh, um, uh, an industry of, of doing parallel computing that's not maybe as developed on the CPU side? So actually, you can have a whole bunch of cores and it just works the software? Yes, I mean, in, uh, graphics itself is the ideal parallel workload. Uh, so the way the graphics problems are specified in API terms is things like, for every pixel on the screen, execute this piece of code. For every vertex in the geometry, execute this piece of code. And that could be, you know, eight million pixels. It could be a million triangles. So there's huge amounts of inherent parallelism within the code. We, you know, we, we work within a thread pool of thousands and millions of threads. Uh, whereas typically uh, in CPU land, you know, finding, finding numbers of threads to execute can be more of a problem. And then, of course, some computational problems are thread parallel rich, and so executing those on a GPU through one of the uh, compute frameworks, the compute APIs, tends to be very successful then. But running uh, code without lots and lots and lots of threads is, uh, is not good on GPU. That's better on the CPU. You're designing by far the most popular GPU in the world, right? It's shipping a billion per year now? So in 2016, we are very proud. We were the world's number one uh, shipping GPU. Uh, our partners, because of course we don't ship any chips at all, but our partners shipped a billion chips containing our GPU. I mean, that's a pretty amazing number. You know, I have to pinch myself when I hear that. Because uh, it's not that many years it's been going on, right? Well, it seems like a lifetime to me. So uh, 2005, my boss walks into my office and he says, uh, are you busy? And I was very keen to impress him in those days. So I said, no, not too bad. Why? What do you want? And he said, I want you to go out and buy a graphics company. And it actually took me a year. And in 2006, we bought uh, Phalanx in Norway, uh, 25 uh, engineers with a lot of uh, very smart talent and some attitude. And we grew that team. And the media processing group in ARM is now well over 500 people. And it's taken us from 2006 to 2017. And yeah, in 2010, we'd hardly shipped any volume at all. 2011, we started shipping in volume. And in 2016, we shipped, a, our partners shipped a billion GPUs. It's been quite a ride, it really has. So there's uh, some of these engineers in Norway, right? And yeah, yeah. Are they just like enjoying life and doing amazing GPU work? And how does it work? Um, so uh, of the four founders of the company, we've still got two of them working for us. Um, and they're still having uh, a good time in designing GPUs. And several of their friends uh, from those 25 uh, are still with us. I probably a large proportion of the 25 still work for us um, and yeah they get up in the morning and they live dream GPU design and we're very very lucky to have them working for us very smart people now as I say you can't build a world-class GPU out of 25 people and you know we've we've had to supplement them with another 400 so but uh, that's that's the way it goes we now have people working on the design in um, San Jose in California in Cambridge in the UK, in Lund in uh, Sweden, and in Trondheim in Norway, and Shanghai in China. And uh, um, so there's self-driving cars? There's, you name it, everybody's using GPUs for all sorts of things. You need to accelerate stuff super fast, uh, yeah. recognize things. Absolutely. Uh, and it's offline if recognition you, and online and everything. A, yeah, this is a very important thing. Um, machine learning um, is something that uh, some people are, are doing on device and some people are doing in the cloud. And certainly we at ARM feel that an awful lot of that uh, machine learning, the inference, needs to be done on device. You need it done locally because you need it done quickly. You don't want latency and you might care about that data. So there's privacy issues about transmitting it over the internet, um, security issues. So doing it locally on device uh, at low power with quick latency is uh, what most people are, are g going to want. And if, if those arm powered laptops like my Samsung Chromebook Plus, mm -hmm. if they feel super nice and smooth, yep. you have a big role to play in making it nice. Oh, absolutely. And um, the, um, the way in which uh, 
compute devices uh, is changing is one of the fascinating things about this job. So, you know, you used to have a very clear classification between, you know, a phone and a laptop, and then along come tablets, and then you have phablets, and then you have Chromebooks, and then you have two-in-ones, and, you know, there's this, this huge variety of devices on which people are doing their primary compute. And I, I just think that's really interesting. People get the devices they want as opposed to the devices that other people tell them they ought to have. And uh, there's, there's gaming also, and Android is the platform of the future for gaming. So mobile, uh, high fidelity mobile gaming is, is going gangbusters. It's growing about twice as fast, particularly in China. It's growing twice as fast as other forms of gaming. So, you know, the casual gaming uh, what you have on phones is rapidly being supplanted by really high fidelity uh, gaming. And the reason for that is the capabilities that we now have on these mobile platforms, both in CPU terms, but also in GPU terms. You have um, the capability for these, these new rendering techniques, um, you know, multiple render targets, things like that, um, deferred rendering in, in G buffers. You know, there's a lot of techniques that have come uh, down from bigger devices onto mobile gaming to improve the quality of the images and uh, to have a, a more compelling, immersive experience on those gaming. So there's more and more AAA games that are coming out on Absolutely. Android and, and the on ARM. The amount of money in this sector is increasing all the time because uh, you know people are writing these games in these in these segments uh, for profit. You know this is a business, and there's a lot of money being made in mobile gaming now. And all these uh, tools they have in SDKs when they develop high-end games on Xbox, latest Xbox, PlayStation, and all that is coming over to the ARM world, right? They get so all we've these spent a tools? lot, yeah, the ecosystem play is very important here, and we've spent a lot of time in, with, in, in ARM Mali working with the uh, game studios and the games engine developers. Uh, so a lot of gaming is done through this uh, intermediate uh, gaming engine, uh, and we've spent uh, a lot of effort ensuring that that's been uh, suitably developed and optimized for use on ARM Mali. Some other companies are using other GPUs to do uh, cloud grid uh, services. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense to use the, the Mali GPU to do cloud stuff? Um, there's no reason why not. It's not a primary focus for us at this time. Um, we are primarily focused on the very high volume markets. And actually, there's a relatively small number of servers in the world, whereas there are massive numbers of uh, uh, portable devices. So that's where we're focusing at the moment. But, you know, we, we, we'll move on to those other segments in time. What was the announcement today a big deal about being the, the VR and AR chipset now? So there's really three things that we're concentrating on in terms of uh, the, the Mali G72. And they're all about making them better. So we've made uh, machine learning processing run faster and more efficiently on, on Mali G72. We're looking at mobile VR uh, and the high quality uh, rendering effects that we've introduced there. Some extensions like uh, mobile multi-view uh, we, we've done there. And, and also the high fidelity gaming. So, you know, mobile VR, machine learning, and high fidelity mobile gaming. These are really the three areas we're concentrating on. Because Google announced that they want to have crazy high resolutions in, in VR, but there's no way to have the bandwidth, so you need to optimize so you, just where you're focusing. Absolutely. It's a thing called foveated rendering. So, um, right, take your thumb and forefinger, hold it out at arm's length. That's the, if you look in the middle of that hole, that's the bit that you can see in any detail. That's the bit you focus on. And your brain actually fills the rest of the picture in by, you know, strange magic brain stuff. So actually what we do uh, in foveated rendering is if you can detect where the person is focusing their eye on, that's the bit you render in detail. And you render the rest of the stuff around it in much lower detail. And the brain is just, it, it says, yeah, that's fine. It, it, it's all good. It says, oh, the, the whole quality is good, even though actually the bit it's not really looking at is in much lower detail. And that's a thing called foveated rendering. And we've, um, we've produced some extensions for that in, uh, on our GPU and made that much more efficient. And that's, that's going really well. Because 
that is an optimization that uh, pays huge, huge dividends because the bit that you're actually rendering in full detail is so small compared to the whole of the detail of the screen. So you can save an awful lot of power and performance. But you need to be accurate on detecting where people are looking. Absolutely. And uh, you don't need you, you don't want to see a latency you, you want to no. you want to have so latency instant. is incredibly important but the tolerance of people uh, from uh, moving their head or moving their eye to the picture in their VR headset changing is varies from really really fast to unbelievably fast so um, certainly you're looking at frame rates you know, up around 100 frames per second to keep most people happy. And some people are incredibly sensitive to that latency delay and you have to have it even faster. Uh, otherwise they feel sick, frankly, motion sickness. The, the, one of the things I'm most excited about uh, at the Google I.O. was uh, VPS, or what do you, I think they call it VPS, indoor positioning. Yep. So you're totally ready for this, right? This basically is Project Tango. Yep. Is Google Maps indoor? Uh, Google Maps indoor. That's what it should be, right? It should mm -hmm. just be Google Maps when you go indoor. Yep. And so that's going to be accelerated. Absolutely. So if you think about your eye, if you think about GPS, you know, it's accurate to within, oh, I don't know, a few meters. But actually, if you move your head even half an inch, you know, even a quarter inch, just a couple of millimeters side to side, you can see a huge change in the picture that your eyes are, uh, are seeing. And with stereoscopic vision, um, you can actually work out where you're standing very, very accurately using cameras. So it, it's all about sensor fusion. You know, roughly where am I? Okay, that's probably gonna come from a cell tower. More accurately, where am I? Okay, that's GPS. Okay, really accurately, where am I? That's probably going to be cameras and high, high, high accuracy digital maps. All and right. You, and you put it all together, and now you know exactly where you are. You know where you're facing. You know where you're moving. You know you can you can do all of this, and and that's the build, the, the thing that I really enjoy about this is this is just a building block. You say, oh, I've, I've, I've now got you some fundamental technology. I can give you accurate position, pose, direction, you know, tracking, etc. What are you going to do with it as an application developer? And I think that's hugely exciting because the application developer is going to take, and they're going to do something with this that you and I had never even dreamt of. But I'll bet you it's going to be fun. And this is ready now. The G72 and the devices that ship in 2018 with this, might be having all these amazing things. Absolutely. You, so a lot of these uh, computer vision applications like, uh, they call it SLAM, Simultaneous Location and Mapping. Uh, SLAM is a huge area of research uh, that people are developing algorithms for, some of which run on CPU, some of which run on GPU, some of which run on specialized accelerators. Uh, it's a real sort of field of research right now.